Welcome back and thanks for staying with Africa News Network First Fast Live. My name is Cindy Mabi. Good evening to you. The war between Uber and metered taxis is far from over. This as metered taxis have vowed to continue fighting the ride-sharing app. A total of three cars were torched on Thursday night in Santon when a fight broke out between the drivers. And a reporter has the following. Frustrated Uber drivers say that these incidents have financial implications on them and that meter taxi drivers need to change their mindset. What happened last night, I'm very, 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 very afraid and scared. Financially, it affects us because we are installing these cars. So once we don't get money to pay our installments, then we will be in debt which means it will kill the economy of the country. Only the mentality has to change and um, um, education. We need to educate people about this modern way of traveling. They just follow one another blindly and when they say attack, they attack without investigating the real story. Meter taxi operators have appealed to government to have an application that will regulate all drivers and their prices. If the government can, can, can establish an app that's going to include all of us, that's going to be regulated by government, by the price, all the destination, then that's going to be, that's gonna be a, a solution. Because now, the thing is, we are working, we are doing the same job, but in a different price. The Department of Transport has denounced this form of attacks between Uber drivers and Maxi taxi operators. They've urged law enforcement agencies to monitor all the identified hotspots in order to prevent these forms of intimidation. Well, the law enforcement um, officers are still uh, mending the areas, uh, hotspot areas where this incident has taken place yesterday and all the other areas where both the Uber and the meter taxi are operating in and around Houting. And uh, we are also working on uh, identifying the perpetrators of yesterday's uh, violence so that the law can take its course. Uber drivers movement have issued out a statement saying they want to solve the issues peacefully. Unfortunately, there are thousands of drivers and some feel retaliation is the only way. From the usage of acid to the torching of cars, what happened here last night follows a string of attacks between these two transportation services. Uber management has come out absolutely condemning these acts and calling them unacceptable. We wait to see how the story unfolds. Tutlejo Kosilinswe for ANN7, Santin, Johannesburg. And joining us in, uh, on the line, rather, is Kenneth Mokhatle, PAC spokesperson. Chris Mgoni is an Uber driver. We'll start in studio. Good evening to you, and thanks so much, Chris, uh, for your time. You've been a, an Uber driver now, you're saying, since 2013, and have made a decent living until now since the intimidation and violence started against you. How, if you were to put yourself in the shoes of uh, the meter taxi drivers or feel that it, you already had an unfair advantage with the latest technology and, and getting in a virgin market, as it were, do you, how would you relate if you were a meter taxi driver? Uh, it must be frustrating for them, uh, especially, you know, like it, at this difficult time with our economy, uh, with so much unemployment rate. I think it must be difficult for them as well. Um, however, I feel like I've got many friends and many people that have converted from the meter taxis to have come and join Uber, the e-hailing services, even Taxify. So I think it must be difficult for them, but uh, it calls for, for, for them to transform. Mm. Let's uh, get uh, Re Mokhatle. Thanks so much for your time. Uh, I mean, when Uber was uh, introduced and we saw uh, the reluctance, uh, not only from the uh, taxi services, but primarily from the uh, uh, public transport system saying that this is going to create unfair competition and take away their market share. What do you think the government ought to do here? Because Uber has called for better protection, etc. Is it the, the role of government now to enter into this private space? Uh, thanks for being me, Cindy, and also uh, let me say good evening to the viewers. Uh, what the PAC is saying is that uh, we are very much worried and concerned with the rising and escalating uh, violence that is erupting between the two organizations. Uh, but our worry is that uh, 
Uh, the Department of Roads and Transport is the one uh, which is uh, the, prince, the political principal, uh, which, is, which is authorized uh, to issue permit for this particular uh, organization. Uh, so w when they are the one who are condemning uh, and not doing anything about this particular issue, then we are becoming very much worried because uh, it is not that uh, it is beginning to, to show up uh, just yesterday night uh, when there was uh, uh, there were two taxis, two, two, two taxis which were involved uh, in, 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 in fire or uh, when, when two taxis were, were bent up. Uh, we have been seeing this particular violence for quite some time now, uh, but uh, the, 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 the relevant uh, department is not, is not taking uh, the relevant uh, measures to, make, to ensure that uh, they are being able to stop the violence and the fire that is erupting in our streets. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, what we are more concerned with uh, as the PAC is that uh, this is affecting uh, largely the passengers and the community at large, and it does not even uh, it does not even concern mostly or principally uh, the, the, those people who are involved in business, because their uh, their primary purpose is only to make money, and the second is only to transport people. But ours is the safety of our people, and in this case, we have been seeing people dying. And Uber is a, an international company. Uh, which is also exploiting our workers uh, in, in South Africa and in other parts of Africa. Uh, what is very simple for them to do is that uh, when one worker of Uber is being bent or is being killed, uh, they replace that particular worker with another worker, and it does not take them a lot of effort. Yeah, just ask, stay on uh, the, sorry, sorry, just stay on the line, Mr. Mohatle. Just, uh, Chris, in your experience, he's just made uh, claims that, uh, you know, Uber drivers are generally exploited uh, and underpaid. What has your experience been? Uh, I can't really deny that. Um, as for the conditions, there are instances where we do feel that we are exploited. Um, with the law affairs, if you think of it, uh, Uber has been here since 2013, but the fuel has gone up, the interest rates, everything, but the price has stayed the same. Actually, they have at some point lowered the prices, so I can't really deny that. It's, it's, I yeah. would say it's, it's true. Yeah, and so how do you then engage with your competitors, because often you'd share either the same space, if not the same routes, uh, in, in avoiding the conflict and, and even where it's escalated to burning of vehicles and, and even death in, death in some uh, instances? Yes, yes. Um, with us, we don't really have a certain point where we, we would rank. So we would get to the areas where they operate only when we're picking up or dropping off a client. So that's when they feel intimidated or, as, like I say, they are frustrated. And then when we get to the areas, that's when they intimidate us, attack us and all those kind of sorts of... Yeah, joining us is uh, Fred Skosana, Johannesburg Regional Meter Taxi Association chairperson. Mr. Skosana, thanks so much for your time. The last time uh, we spoke, you were of the view that Uber is uh, operating illegally in the country because they do not comply or have to comply with the laws of uh, public transportation. Your view in the escalation of violence, though, surely you cannot condone uh, people's property being burned and even lives threatened. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry just to be late. We held in the, in the traffic. So it, it's very unfortunate because we've been talking about the same thing, about the illegality of Uber and the preferential treatment that is being meted to, uh, to Uber. And then if you remember on the 27th of uh, July, we had a meeting down here with the Minister of Transport where he, he made it very clear to say, the Act is very clear, Section 50 of the Land National Transport Act, to say whoever operates any public transport m must possess an operating license or a permit. And secondly, if we talk about the violence, meter taxis have got rank space where they start from. So they cannot be uh, actually, they, they are not the perpetrators of violence. The perpetrators of violence are those illegal people who come and encroach at their ranks and come and pick up at their ranks, which they are not supposed to be doing. To start with, they're illegal, 
And secondly, we are saying even if you are legal, there is what we call uh, on, on the operating license or a permit, the annex chair, which dictates to you, say, where do you suppose to pick up? Yeah. So we are talking about a bunch of illegals. Excuse me, uh, Remo Khate, just, just your response here, because we're dealing with a situation where there is some set of rules that govern the Taxi Meter Association and Uber being an application is exempted from that. So there's clearly a conflict or contestation there as to which territories Uber can go to. And but, but most importantly, the choice for consumers though. If people prefer Uber, it seems that the meter taxi in this instance are trying to almost stifle or um, under duress force people to use their services. What is your view? Yes, that, that is debatable, but the fact is that uh, Uber, Uber is, does not respect uh, the legislation uh, here uh, in South Africa and in other parts of, of, of the world. Uh, we will remember that uh, the department, in the Department of Labor, Uber does not comply with those rules which, uh, in fact, uh, uh, the workers uh, should be given to, should be awarded to. Uh, they, they just do as they want, or they just do as they please. And they, they are not complying with the rules and the constitution uh, of, of the respective country. They do as they please. And we are not happy where we are standing. Uh, because, uh, but I know we're splitting hairs here because Uber is an application. I understand that they, they operate in the same space and provide the same services. But the difficulty is that unless there is legislation that deals with these alternative, more innovative ways of transportation, we're just going to have a stalemate with drivers uh, inflicting violence on each other. Hence, we are saying that uh, we, are, we are now pointing uh, to the political principle to say that they are the ones uh, on authority uh, to give permits to the relevant uh, units to say that you are allowed to move uh, into this particular space and that one is not allowed to move into that particular space. Uh, we cannot as the PAC or Uber cannot alone uh, say that uh, we are going to operate in this particular space. But it is the department which is uh, authorized to can uh, award a permit uh, to the relevant uh, person. So it is them who are in fact uh, causing uh, this particular death, is, uh, this particular violence which is, which, mm. which is perpetuating uh, even today. And they are not saying anything. We have not seen them uh, coming out today uh, to say that uh, we are in fact saying that uh, uh, the, the, the Uber must stop operating or we are taking this particular decision to say that... Yeah, let, let's just give Chris an opportunity to respond. Sorry, Ray uh, Just so the... There's already a hostile environment, clearly, and it has to do with the law. In your view as an Uber driver, would you say you encroaching on the te territory uh, of the Meter Taxi Association who has to comply with government uh, prescripts while you are free to essentially reign, as it were? Uh, actually, that's not true. Uh, we're not encroaching. I think that's, that's been the uh, unfortunate part with our government. Uh, because Uber and Taxify and any other e-hailing services, they haven't just come into the country and operated. Uh, the government is aware of Uber and has endorsed Uber. However, they haven't been, they don't have a backbone to come publicly to announce and declare that they have endorsed Uber. And as for the, the, the manner in which the e-hailing uh, services operate, they had the Land Act, which catered for the meter taxes, the traditional way of operating, and using that way, Uber will not work. So that's why they have approved Uber, as far as I know, I stand to be corrected, but by them, because I know that they have endorsed Uber, and they have accepted Uber. Uber operates with authority, however, they are still amending the Land Act. And so far, they allowed Uber to operate while they're busy with the amendment. Mm. And as far as I know, the amendment is just at the end point. They're just about to finish it. Mm. Yeah. Mrs. Kosan, I mean, it, it seems that, you know, the target is on the, the drivers who themselves are employed or, you know, owner drivers trying to make a living that did not invent the, the application, that did not bring it into the country, but took up the opportunity to be part of it. So to, to meet violence against them, 
in, is, is, is energy that is misdirected as opposed to lobbying for the change of legislation or inventing an application that would be more inclusive. Cindy, let's correct this statement. It doesn't mean that because the act is being uh, changed, let's, let's say you use the right way, it's being amended, then it means then you can start operating. It takes years. It cannot even take maybe even two years, I can tell you now. So again, because they are misled, unfortunately you have just brought in the driver. I'm a leader in the taxi industry. I'm an operator, let me put it like that, an operator and a leader. So you are just, a, you know, when you invite people, you invite people who, are, who do not even understand what is to be an operator. To start with, e-hailing is not legalized here in South Africa. Totally no. To say the government, to say the government has embraced them. Yes, there are those officials because they are having a vested interest in it. But lawfully, it, the hailing, it's illegal in South Africa. It's not, it has not been legalized and it will take years. Once it can, but the can point be, is they're operating, Mr. Kozan. They can are we? operating. Even if you're saying they're illegal, yeah. why it's have they yes. not been arrested exactly. or, or you know, their vehicles impounded? It doesn't make sense. Uh, I, I'm sure you must give him, because I gave him time. I was no, no. talking Go here. ahead. Yes. He must just, he mustn't try to try and distract me. Let me tell you, we are talking about an illegal operation, which at, this, at, at a certain point, that is the reason why police have got some tight hands in this situation. Because once they protect in something that is illegal, they know that if they use excessive force, at the end of the day, you know the Marigano had happened, then the very same top brass of police women will say to you, you used an excessive force, you are not supposed to be protecting uh, this illegal thing. So that is one thing that we have to understand about police, because they are, the police duty, it's simple, it's to, for safety and security. There cannot be securities for Uber, mm. since because we say that's an illegal operation. And at the same time, it is not our drivers who go and, and torch and damage Uber cars. Like yesterday, our cars were, were damaged in, around 17. I, I'm sure three cars were damaged around 17. But all what we are putting, always, we're always talking about Uber. Because they are the darlings of those corrupt officials, especially within police force. There are some police who owns cars at Uber. There are some officials in the Department of Transport who owns Uber, uh, cars at Uber. Why? Because they masquerade as meter taxis. They are not visible. All right, I think that's, that's We are something... talking about uh, something that is illegal. Yeah. We, we cannot uh, beat up the bush and say... With, with all due respect, uh, Bamus Kosan, if, if you have that kind of evidence, then there are processes uh, by law that you can follow without necessarily you know, reverting to violence. I just want to come back to the legality of it. When you signed up as an Uber driver, were you, was it explained to you as, uh, in terms of how the laws of the land works when it comes to meter taxis or even... Um, uh, taxi hailing services? Uh, yes, uh, definitely. And one thing that I must put, um, Uber has got stringent conditions and measures when you sign up for the vehicle and for the driver. The driver has to go through a background check, a training, has to have a PDP. And as for the vehicle, despite the roadworthy, you still have to go through a DECRA, um, DECRA inspection and uh, the vehicle must have a, an insurance which has got passenger liability. And with those security measures, you can compare with, uh, with the traditional taxes. You're not, you're not going to find that. Secondly, it's a no-brainer that why if Uber is illegal, why are we not arrested? And why are they not bringing the government to book to say, why are you letting these people operate? Because Uber is visible. It's not like we are invisible. Uber is visible. It's there. They see it. We pass through roadblocks. Our government has embraced Uber. Your response, please, Babus Kosan. Yes. You see, that's why I say, uh, here I've got someone who doesn't understand what is he talking about. Talking about passenger liabilities, talking about... Uh, going through stringent tests like a PDP and all that. That is something that the meter taxi guys are possessing. I started operating meter taxis when we were using what we call in, on top of a, a PDP. We were, holding, we were having what we call topographic license. We're not being driven by uh, a GPS. 
whereby today you find that someone has been fetched outside outside South Africa. It's coming and, and then driving Uber, going all over. Once he has a problem with the connection with the GPS, he doesn't know where he goes. Let me tell you, I always hear people saying Uber is safe. I wonder from this year, how many times have you ever read through the press that any passenger has been raped by a meter taxi driver? I wonder. But that they are talking about stringent tests and all that. No, they are just, unfortunately, these guys, because most of them are blacks, they are just being used, you, you know, they are just being used and, and because this perpetuates a black on black violence. The bosses are sleeping there and they are looking at them and they are coming here at this studio to come and protect them. And they come and protect something that they don't even know. We, we joined on the line uh, Babus Kosana by Gauteng MEC for Community Safety. Thank you so much for your time. MEC, Uber has made an impassioned plea for greater uh, security and protection, saying that uh, it's now in the hands of government to protect them from criminality and attacks from uh, you know, what they allege to be meter taxi drivers. What's your view? Uh, anyone who's committing crime in this country must face the might of the law, must actually be prosecuted, arrested, be prosecuted, and be sent to prison. And in this case, if a crime has been committed, and yesterday a crime was committed, two car, three cars were uh, bent to, to ashes. Two were petrol bombed, and the, others, the other one was actually bent as, for, as a form of, of revenge. Anyone who's involved in those attacks, and though all three attacks has committed a crime, and those people are wanted by the police, and we make sure that we'll arrest them, particularly those that have been threatening people, that have been threatening violence, that they will actually ban, because we're actually following on those people. We've got the footage from, uh, we've got information from, from, uh, from media houses where people were interviewed and they threatened violence. And those are the people that we are targeting and they need to point out who are the perpetrators of violence, who are the people that get bent those cars and we'll make sure that you arrest them and they'll go through the processes and we hope that they'll go to jail. M MEC, maybe also just at a point of clarity, uh, and perhaps you can shed some light in your space as part of the community safety, but largely the government as well, what the arrangement was to have the likes of Uber in the country. Mr. Skosana from the uh, taxi, Meter Taxi Association is of the view that this service is illegal in the first place and doesn't conform to the laws of the land. Anyone who's operating a, a public must actually apply for a operator's license and the person will be given an operator's license. You must have all these things, the PDPs, etc., etc. I'm not going to count all of them, but you must have an, operate, a, a, an operator's license. That concern was raised by some, by, by some of the emitter taxi people that some of the Uber drivers don't have operator's, uh, operator's license, but some, I must say, they do have Operators, uh, operators license. We escalated the issue of the Uber drivers and the meter taxi, uh, and meter taxi drivers to the minister's office. Both Minister of Balula and Minister um, Anasogai are involved, and there was a meeting with the meter taxi people as well as the Uber people, and there is an agreement where they indicated that they'll make sure that there is peace, and unfortunately. People have decided not to honor that agreement and they started attacking each other. And, and we have also responded by making sure that we deploy as many officers as possible in all the routes that are affected. But it doesn't necessarily mean that in the routes that are not affected, officers are not on alert. Actually, our officers are on standby. Anyone, anyone who takes chances will actually give this thing to face. MEC, just a very brief response, uh, Mr. Skosana. We're out of time from what the MEC said. The only part that I'm going to answer, we never had an agreement and coexistence with Uber. I was leading the delegation that was meeting the, the Minister of Transport. We never discussed those issues. We discussed issues of violence. We discussed issues of le legality of Uber and Metatexas. 
So I, I, I wonder where does the MEC, because she was not in that meeting. I All right, Mr. Skosana, I beg your pardon. We have to go. Fred Skosana, Johannesburg Regional Meter Taxi Association Chairperson, and Chris Mgoni, Uber driver, and on the line, Gauteng MEC for Community Safety, Sizagele Nkosi Malubane. And you at home, thanks sir, for staying with us. We'll take a quick head break. We're back after this.